thing, guys. Don't be scared to interview. You're not going to knock every interview out the park. You know, you have to keep on interviewing to become a professional interviewer. What's going on, everybody? It's your boy HD. Hey, appreciate you for tuning into the channel. And first and foremost, let me thank everybody that's helped me get to 2,000 subscribers. I couldn't have done it without you guys. And I really appreciate everything that you do. If you're on my social media, you already know I've been doing the giveaway for this. I might drop this in the morning. So, hey, if you ain't seen the giveaway information, please go to my social media and check it out and prepare for the giveaway. But let's talk about what this video is about is pretty much what have I learned in 2021 since interviewing for new cybersecurity roles. Now, guys, I am, a, I guess you would say I'm a veteran now when it comes to cybersecurity. So it's not entry level roles and it's not mid level roles. Anything I interview for now is senior probably close to principal then you have managerial level those are the type of roles i've been interviewing and i'm going to let you know like i've noticed a lot of different things and you'll probably see me look down at my phone but we're going to get into it. first things first what i did notice is that there are a lot of job opening in pretty much every area of cybersecurity. i want to say a lot of things uh, a lot of us are working from home. Companies have realized they need to bolster their cybersecurity because they weren't prepared for a workforce that was going to be working 100% from home. So that's one of the factors. Number two is still we have everything still going to the cloud. More and more logs are coming in every day and they don't have the manpower to support it. And three, a lot of companies are just getting on board with cybersecurity. They didn't believe that it was real and someone probably got hacked and they found out, hey, you know, this is really real. So that's one of the things I noticed, you know, you don't have to worry about being a scarcity of, of jobs. You know, it's still reported right now that the unemployment rate in cybersecurity is at zero percent. So you do the math. If you're looking into getting into cybersecurity right now, you know, I can help you out with that. But also don't be discouraged. There is room for everybody to eat from. So if you've been following me, you know, in 2018, I was laid off and I was looking for a job again. And if you haven't watched that video, it's up here. It's like how to handle a layoff. But the salaries have gone up tremendously because now cybersecurity is seen as a need. So if you have one to two years experience, depending on your market, depending on what you do in cyber, that's pretty much going to be six figures. Like I said, it's still contingent on some things, but for the most part, six figures because they need you. You have options. Everybody's trying to get the best talent, somebody that has experience because they want to be able to trust whoever they have in their environment. So, guys, you know, if you are at work right now and don't feel like you've been getting treated right and you want more money, start applying. You know, throw loyalty out the window. At the end of the day, if you did right by a company, they'll hire you back. You know, it is what it is. Another thing I've noticed is that recruiters, most of them have been super upfront about salary expectations and you know any number most of the time you saying what you're thinking about is you know they tell you hey yeah we can do that and i'll probably tell you at the end of a way that you can probably dictate that as well if you're nervous and you're scared about talking about your money uh, we'll talk about that but that's been a good thing because that's one of the things people hate you some of who to hit you up and then they give you run around then you find out at the end that the salary wasn't what you were expecting no tell people the salary in the beginning and you know they could choose if they want to work for it or not and then go for somebody who will it's that simple you don't waste anybody's time feeling is mutual shout out to jacob Lattimore for you know his song mutual the amount of remote roles is, is crazy so if you're in living in one of the states that's not well known for cybersecurity roles don't worry about it because if you have the talent and the skill set most of the time, they'll let you work remote and they'll pay you based on if you were staying in that city. So that's one of the other things I've, I've noticed is like most of these things are remote or you could just tell them, look, look, free gym. If they want you to come in, just tell them, hey, I'm not interested in coming in. And guess what? They'll say, OK, well, you got to come in. Then they'll come back. They'll, they're going to circle the block. It's like, well, yeah, we can do remote. So, you know, if you want to really do remote, you know, don't fold from that. Let them know what you want to do. And most of the time, they'll work with it. Because at the end of the day, this has been two years going on now. I don't see COVID slowing down. Uh, new strains are coming. A lot of people are uneasy about being at work. And I know, for one, people at the office are not clean. I've seen many people not wash their hands when they need a bathroom. 
it is what it is so that's one i've, I've been noticing uh i noticed a, a lot of companies were trying to actually get the incident response team better as you know we've seen different hacks this year with the coastline hack i was just saying something about t-mobile was breached we had i can't think of it right now but oh uh accenture and on i can go on and on so with that being said other companies are taking notice and they're like you know what we are weak in this area we need to bring that in and i had a, a ton of interviews that were related to incident response and you know that was we'll, we'll talk about it but that was pretty cool because incident response is cool if i had to describe incident response it's like being a fireman and a policeman at the same time you gotta respond to a, a crime or a fire and that's pretty much it you get to put it out or it's too late and and now you're the detective and you're trying to figure out everything what happened you know and then if you are doing any type of incident response you know type of interviews like one of the good lines i like to use in interviews is like i tell people all the time you know when you go into the environment i have to assume we're already breached we just don't know if the person's made their move or not or not that's uh, a good one it's, it's really helped me out in interviews it's actually different this time because this time around i was intentional about my job search and that's what also what i teach my clients is being intentional with your job search you don't want to just apply to everything if you don't feel like the job fits your skill set or fits what you're looking for don't apply to it apply to stuff that interests you that you think your skill set you know is or that you could potentially do apply to that stuff look at the company culture and, and see how it aligns with you so i have a way shorter excel sheet which i may i don't know i may show it or not i might have to blur out some names or something like that i may show it i might put it right here or right here i don't know but it's, it's a way shorter list and i was intentional and i also tell you guys this i forgot this i skipped past all this most of these roles i didn't apply to the recruiter reached out to me first and i like to tell people one of the ways i can spot who's you know faking the funk is that when you have enough experience they come find you you don't have to look for their things and if you don't have your linkedin profile up to date with like your best skill set you're only hindering yourself and so you need to do that but so i must have found me i i got to you know the end levels of a lot of interviews and then some i didn't you know i look I scripted most of this, but then this is unscripted part. One of the best things that I could teach you is to be self-aware. I was very self-aware at all my strong, strongest points and my weakest points. So I would always go after interviews and try to work on the weakest points. Or if it came in time where I was interviewing for something and there was someone that I wasn't familiar with before the interview, I would go work on that so I could familiarize myself with it in case they asked me about it. And when it's came to these interviews, they haven't all been super technical. They've been conversation based. And those are the kind I like, because it should be told most of the protocols and all the stuff you want to talk about hashing and all, all that stuff is fine. But that's like test related stuff. Your mind, most of the people aren't doing that on a daily. They know how to do the job and they know why something should be and why it shouldn't be. So sometimes people know how to do it but they're not really remembering i'm a person like that like i i i always struggle with the cyber kill chain methodology i always not struggle with every part of it i know how to follow it but i struggle with it i struggle with like memorizing some of those things but i know how to get the job done when it comes to work most of our tools will tell us you know what part of the miter attack framework this is you know what type of technique that they use and etc tell us the, the source port and so most of your tools do the work for you so most savvy inter interviewers already know that they're just trying to see how you think and that's a big one guys how you think uh one of i, I interviewed for um a company you know what i'm gonna say right now i interviewed for a position at square that i did not get and it was cool i felt it went cool but i knew i was rocky on the part and you know what the guy said hey you know, I get, he gave the recruiter feedback, you know, I couldn't really tell how he handled issues. So I knew I struggle with when I'm interviewing, giving you a linear path on how I solve stuff, because my mind doesn't work like that. When I'm talking, my mind jumps to all this. It's kind of like when you're cleaning up at the house 
and you're trying to do this, but then the door is open, you gotta go close that, I'll go get your daughter, do this. And that's how my mind works when I'm kind of thinking about something when I'm interviewing sometimes. So sometimes I try to use my notebook and when they ask me something, I'm trying to write down my steps to help me, you know, lay it out better. You know, but at the end of the end, at the end of the day, that role wasn't for me and I was grateful for the opportunity because it just shows me what I'm not the best at. And that's the thing, guys. Don't be scared to interview. You're not going to knock every interview out the park. You know, you have to keep on interviewing to become a professional interviewer. And I ended up, you know, doing that. I got, listen, I was against some odds for something. And that might be, that might be on the next video after this. Um, but uh, that was uh, one of the things where I got some good feedback. I went into an interview where I talked to a director and also talked to the team. And I didn't say the team grilled me. They just wanted to know what I, what I wanted to do because their team was very hands-on. And I already knew I didn't do good on that. And that's okay. Also, I'm jumping around. But listen, when a recruiter reaches out to you, it's okay to tell them, you know, I'm interested, but I don't, I don't have the most experience in this. It's okay. They still might submit you anyway. Never a hey, look. If you don't hear none of us and you made it this far, make sure you go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Share this out. It will help somebody. Listen, do not. Don't I always talk about allowing your resume. But listen, when you're interviewing, be truthful about your skill set. Don't study some stuff and act like you are actual subject matter expert, because what will happen is if you're on this level, but then you say you're all the way up here. Well, what happen is they're going to grade you on the level they perceive you to be at. And what will happen is that if that doesn't happen, you might be gone fast. And I've been saying this on my podcast. Uh, a dude on Twitter is still talking about how, you know, he got let go from a company after three weeks because they wanted somebody more senior. And like I said, I'm of the notion that he probably told him he was more senior. I haven't asked him yet. I mean, I'll. Once he finds something else, I may ask him. It's probably like a sore spot right now, you know, because at the end of the day, when you're going through something, you can't really see what you did wrong. Like if I actually go back and look at my job search in 2018, I can really say, you know what? I think I got some raw deals sometimes, but then sometimes I probably wasn't the best. But I always thought I was. the best. That's something I've noticed. I was listen. I've just noticed a lot of companies, man. It's one of the things that I've been able to do when it came to interviewing and on my resume and also through my interviews, I prove my worth, I prove my value, I prove things that I've done for my company. That's a big one. Um, and sometimes when I'm not opposed to job hopping, but if you do job hop, make sure you start doing things and you get some stuff straight when you're at the companies. So that when you start interviewing for roles that are super high, it's super like they come with certain cachet that you're able to prove your worth and your value and why you, you know, demand a certain salary. If not, then you may be stuck because some people haven't proved anything. Some people haven't improved enough. Like I put on there, like I've helped, you know, so I, you know, reach a certain maturity level. That's a big thing because some companies don't have a big maturity level. Their maturity level is low if it comes to a sock or some type of procedure. So being able to have a person like that, that's a tremendous value. A person that's worked on a large client for years who's had to uh, collaborate with different business units and talk to them and use their soft skills. Like I sell my soft skills a lot, especially with these managerial and lead positions, because most of the time as you're going up, your work gets slashed in half of being real technical. And now you're pretty much a mouthpiece that's telling higher up people stuff in good terms that they can understand. So listen, I know I've been rambling on and on, but honestly, it's it's really been cool. This has been a different experience. I think it is because I got way more experience than I did in 2018. In 2018, I didn't have a plan. Like I said, my class, now you need to have a plan. Know you want to go. Know what you want to do. Know how much money you want to make. Know what type of benefits you want. All that stuff is super important. And sometimes we forget about that. That's been it for me, guys. I appreciate you if you rock with me this far. The channel's going to get better. Check out you know what I'm offering on my website. I, listen, I got a course that I'm going to develop to show you how to get into cybersecurity. Um, less coaching and more courses. It's going to really help you out. And it's a joy for me. So I appreciate you guys. And at the end of the day, let's get textual.